those are the two postulates of special relativity. One, no inertial frame is better than any other inertial frame. Two, light always travels at sea. So now there are some really, really weird results. The first weird result comes from a very, it comes, it comes from a thought experiment. I have a clock and here's how the clock works. I have two mirrors and there's a photon bouncing between the mirrors. It's a photon traveling at sea. And every time it hits one of the mirrors, it goes tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. But now say I'm in a train traveling at like three fifths the speed of light and you're on the ground watching me. And so now the clock is not sitting still anymore. And okay. so the photon's not bouncing up and down anymore. It's gotta bounce also like diagonally in order to keep up with how the clock is moving. It has to travel a longer distance between ticks now since it's moving diagonally instead of straight up and down. Which in theory would mean that your clock would become slower, yet in fact it does not mean that? No, that's exactly what it means. It, it means my clock becomes slower because the photon still has to travel at sea, but it takes longer. So if you are traveling at three-fifths C with respect to me, I will see your clock as moving slower, and you will also see my clock as moving slower. We will both mutually see the other person moving in like slow motion. It leads to this thing called the twin paradox, which is you have two twins, mm -hmm. and one of them is a space traveler and the other is not. And the space traveler twin gets in her spaceship and like starts flying really fast with respect to the Earth. And so the twin on Earth like looks up and she's like, oh, my twin's moving so fast, time seems to be moving really slowly for her. Like she's aging more slowly than I am. But of course, the twin on the spaceship is also looking down on Earth and saying, you know, wow, my twin is moving really fast with respect to me. So each one sees the other as aging more slowly. Right. So then when they get back to Earth, when the twin gets back to Earth, who will be younger? Um, the answer is actually the twin on Earth is right. The twin on the spaceship will be younger because ah. the twin on the spaceship had to fly out and back, which means her velocity had to change, which means she was not in an inertial frame the whole time. So her frame of reference is no good. The second counterintuitive effect of special relativity is my favorite one. It's called the loss of simultaneity or the loss of synchronization. So you're at the like dead center of a train car and you turn on a light, which is the same thing as throwing a photon moving at sea towards either end of the train. And both sides of the train get hit at the same time. Synchronization. Synchronization. So let's put a clock at both ends of the train. So both clocks get hit at nine o'clock in your frame. But now let's imagine my frame. So I'm on the ground. In my frame, you are moving. This side is gonna be rushing towards the light, and mm. this side's gonna be rushing away from the light. But the light's still traveling in C at either direction after you turn on the light. So from your point of view, both clocks get hit at the same time. But from my point of view, this one has to get hit first. But both clocks still have to say three o'clock when they get hit. This one is gonna read an earlier time. Because when this one gets hit at three o'clock, mm, this one can't read three o'clock yet because it hasn't been hit yet. So weird. So clocks that are synchronized in your frame are not synchronized in my frame if they are far apart from each other. The third, the third and final counterintuitive effect of special relativity is about what happens to lengths when they're moving. Okay. What? I'm sorry, I was thinking wrong things. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so say that I wanna measure the length of this log. How am I gonna do that? I ask you to run at a speed V and I'm gonna time how long it takes you to run from the left end of the log to the right end of the log. I'm gonna measure the time when you're at the left end of the log and when you're at the right end of the log. And let's say I time you and it takes you 10 seconds. So I know it took you 10 seconds. I know you were traveling at a speed V. So the length of the log is 10 times V. Okay. Easy enough. But what's happening in your frame? Let's say we give you a stopwatch. And in my frame, your stopwatch is slow, right? So if I say um, it took you 10 seconds to run from end to end of the log, your stopwatch is only gonna say 9.5 something. 9.5 something seconds when you get to the end of the log. Uh, in your frame, since less time passed while you were running past the log, or it's your frame, so it's while the log is running past you. 
<laughs> okay. The log is zooming past the me. The log is zooming past you, and it only takes 9.5 seconds, but the log is still zooming past you at the same speed, V. Because okay. if you're moving at V with respect to the log, the log is moving at V with respect to you. Yes, yes. But it, okay. it only takes 9.5 seconds, so the log is a little bit shorter. In your frame of reference, it's not, it's not an illusion. It's not a trick. The log is literally shorter because it is moving. So time is dilating, but space is contracting. Exactly. Time dilates, lengths contract, and synchronized clocks become desynchronized. That's completely bug nuts. It is completely bug nuts. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot to tell you about my favorite special relativity paradox. Can we oh, talk your about favorite? It? Okay. Yeah, my favorite. Okay. So I have a barn mm -hmm. and I have a ladder. All righty. Um, and this is my friend. My friend bets me that she can fit the ladder in the barn. Well, if she runs really, really, really fast, then in the ground frame, the ladder will shrink. The ladder will shrink. So she'll be able to get the ladder all the way inside the barn. I'll shut the doors to prove that the whole ladder was in there. And then she'll run right out. I close the doors and open oh. them really fast so that she can get out again. Oh, I see. The confusing part is what's happening in my friend's frame. Because she's not moving. No, in, she is moving. Or in her frame, she's not moving. But the So in her frame, the barn... In her frame, the ladder should never fit. The, it should super not fit because the barn's moving. The barn shrinks. The solution is the loss of simultaneity. Uh-huh. Because in my frame, I close the doors at the same time, and she's stuck in there. But in her frame... They are not opening and closing at the same time. Exactly. So first, both doors are open and my friend enters the barn. Then the right door of the barn closes and opens again before it hits the ladder. The barn passes over my friend and the left door closes behind her. That's bug nuts. Right? That's totally bug nuts. So you and your friend will have completely different subjective experiences of what just happened with the barn and the ladder. Yes. That's the really cool thing about special relativity is it's... It's based on these two postulates that are, you know, maybe not the most intuitive, but not complicated ideas. No, not really. And then the results that you derive from them are absolutely bug nuts. All right, so that's probably about all we have time for. Thank you so much, Mom. It was my pleasure. Thank you for watching.